Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we are going to be talking about the privacy news, but first, if you happen to be a person who needs a VPN, not everybody needs one, but if you are a person that travels a lot, you need access to uh, safe and secure, uh, a way to safely secure wireless networks, maybe you're out at Starbucks a lot, I don't know, or something, and you need to get a good VPN, definitely consider Nord. You can have up to six different devices connected simultaneously on your Nord account. You can pay with a variety of uh, a variety of ways, including cryptocurrencies for ultimate uh, privacy. They are not based in the five eyes. They are based out of Panama. Uh, so definitely a VPN worth looking into. And uh, we are um, uh, basically, if you use my link here, which is at TLM dot li forward slash nord you can grab three years of access for 107 dollars which is a pretty good deal so that being said let's go ahead and uh, jump on into our privacy news for today so to start we talked not too long ago about um i did not say that word right not too long ago about DuckDuckGo's privacy bill that they had wrote so they wrote this privacy bill they were presenting it to a variety of different people to see who they could uh, get on takers. And so um, a senator actually comes in, um, uh, Senator Hawley, um, MO, that one's, is MO I think is Missouri, I think. Um, so they are presenting this. Now it's very close to DuckDuckGo's bill, so probably inspired from DuckDuckGo's bill, but uh, it's not quite exactly the same. Now, in this case here, the, the reason for this is because, you know, nearly everybody has a browser that supports a do not track script in the browser. The problem is there's no standard for that. And what he's trying to do is say for American companies, they have to obey that standard and not track anybody that turns on that option. And so there's some, uh, there's a few different uh, differences there, but for the most part, it is, uh, it is, uh, a very similar to build to what DuckDuckGo was doing um, that we wrote uh, wrote about, you know, talked about uh, a couple weeks back. So anyway, um, this is an interesting article. This comes from Sleepy Eyes Vince. I'm not sure if he's on right now or not, but uh, fascinating article out of uh, out of uh, Australia. So in this case here, there was a situation regarding fingerprints and work. So like, I remember the days when, you know, you'd go, you'd work at your fast food restaurant, nobody cared about drug tests, nobody cared about anything. Now it's like, you can't go work at McDonald's if they got in your cheek swabbed or something. It's like, if you don't trust me as an employee, maybe I don't want to work here, but if I walk around with that view, I know of one place in town that doesn't do those tests. So it's like one of these, these, these privacy invasions have gotten more and more. Well, in this case here, there was a Queensland sawmill worker that the employer put in a system that required them to log in, sign in, sign out with biometric trackers, uh, basically the fingerprint scan. So when you wanted to go and log in to work, you know, clock into work, you went in there and instead of punching in a code, you went in there and you scanned your fingerprint. And so what he's saying is that this is not appropriate. You cannot have my biometric data. They fired him over it for failing to, uh, failing to utilize the system. And uh, eventually this went through and he won his lawsuit. It wasn't for any privacy related stuff. It was actually more on the basis that the employer didn't give sufficient notice. Uh, but regardless, he, he did win his case, but it raises this big question about all these things. W what would you do if you had, like, like, we talked about this before, I think it was on a tinfoil hat time, where there was a, a company was building an ID card that would literally track everything you do at work. So if you're, you know, it'll track exactly where you are, exactly when you are, exactly what you're doing, all these kind of things. The, this card will track everything you do, every bench you sit at, every place you go, every hallway you walk down, everything in full real time. That's what that thing was doing. And so this type of approach is, I don't like this. Like, give me an ID card, give me a code, give me anything other than using biometrics to have to log into work. But we get to this point where we need regulation in this case. I'm not a big pro-government guy. I, I really don't like government, but unfortunately, if government doesn't step in and do something, people get taken advantage of. And we need regulation in place to make sure that we can actually go out and, and have a job without 
compromising and giving up biometric information to these companies that are simply passing it over to third parties that we don't even know who they are. And so this is an interesting article uh, out of Australia looking at these general trends. Um, next, um, don't forget uh, <laughs> Snapchat. This was a fun article. I've talked about this before. It's worth saying every once in a while. Um, Snapchat and most companies have a means for employees to actually get into any given account. So I remember I was doing some trainings with YouTube and even our YouTube uh, person could get in and access our account to track how we're doing. It makes you wonder, can they access just YouTube or can they access everything in the Google account? Hmm. Well, this case with Snapchat, there were some Snapchat employees that were caught abusing access to data to spy on users. So, I mean, you think about, you know, actors, actresses, musicians, whatever else, they'll have all these social media accounts and there are employees that literally have access to everything in their account. All of those things that they have set on private, the comp there's employees of the company have access to this. Uh, there was a Facebook executive that was caught stalking somebody with the data. In this case, some Snapchat users were this. I mean, I remember when I just did basic subcontracting, underpaid subcontracting of a contract that I worked on for a few years. It was an academic uh, software system. I literally had access, despite I didn't work on the K through 12 team, I could go in with my access and view the grades of any K through 12 student around the country, which is a huge violation of the privacy laws inside of this. So when technology moves aside and we start forcing to give all this data and information to, to all of these other companies, it raises this question of the security of that data. We get the same question when HIPAA is starting to integrate with Alexa, it raises some issues. But in this case here, the employees at Snapchat had access to, the, to all of the data inside of Snapchat. So, you know, you think that your Snapchat's just snapping going away? Mm, no, they still have access to it. <laughs> so, something to keep in mind. Uh, well, finally, ending with some Amazon stories. Full disclosure, I do sell things on Amazon. I'm an author. My books are up there. I also have an affiliate link at the top of the screen. If you buy on Amazon, you can use my affiliate link. I always appreciate that. Uh, but sometimes Amazon does scare the bejeebers out of me. Um, this is one here. Uh, remember, we talked briefly about the Alexa situation a while back where Alexa, Alexa was, they were starting to work on these skills so that Alexa could determine your mood. It's like, oh, we feel that you are maybe not feeling good. Shall I get you a, you know, <laughs> creepy. But Amazon was working on this method to determine somebody's emotions based on their voice processes. Well, enough people I think said, hmm, that's a little creepy, that they just decided, let's go ahead and make a voice activated wearable device that can recognize human emotions. Great, so I don't even have to go out and buy one of these stupid devices. I just have to walk in the proximity to some moron who's bought one, all right? And then the voice will turn on. Uh, voice activation is gonna turn on. It's going to determine the mood. What's this, the usefulness of this? You're engaging in something, your Alexa thing will beep, 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 beep. He seems distracted. What? Uh, creepy. So yeah, they are working on this handheld gadget like a smart watchy type thing that is voice activated that can recognize human emotions are you freaked out yet i'm a little freaked out and our final story for the day amazon is 3d scanning people's bodies in exchange for gift cards it's kind of like the facebook's you know putting the the uh like the, the root access app on teenagers' phones in exchange for a, a gift card. You know, same thing. So Amazon's doing this study and what they say is that this is not for any marketing purposes. They're doing a study to look at body diversity and if you allow yourself to be scanned, you will get $25 in Amazon, uh, and a $25 Amazon gift card for that. So with that being said, um, I would like to know which one of you would allow Amazon to scan your body in exchange for $25? What could they be doing with this data? Does this freak you out or is this something that's pretty cool? I don't know. You let me know in the comments down below.